Good morning. Yeah. Let's read together the prayer for illumination. Together, guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verses 15 to 21. Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 15. You understand, O Lord, remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. When your words came, I add them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. I never sat in the company of revelers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me, and you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending and my wound grievous and incurable? Will you be to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails? Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let these people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to these people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and redeem you from the grafts of the cruel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, uh, this morning we are very privileged to have uh, our dear brother, uh, Reverend Dr. Gordon Wong, uh, who is the president of Trek Singapore, to share God's word with us. You know what happened was uh, end of last year when we had our annual conference, Dr. Gordon came to see me and he asked me, you know, say, uh, can the Singapore pastors come and visit us on this Sunday? And I say, no problem, as long as one of you take the pulpit on that Sunday. And so he is now here to pay his dues. <laughs> okay? And so we welcome Reverend Dr. Gordon. I think. I think, anyway, I want to thank Pastor Andrew for this privilege. <laughs> no, seriously, it's a real privilege. This is the last 10, 15 a.m. service huh, for this year. And you've given me the privilege also of speaking at your last 8, 15 a.m. service. <laughs> but uh, seriously, the, the light refreshments that your members have prepared, uh, the earlier group of pastors enjoyed them. I hope they left some for the, the rest of you. I'm sure they have. But you should go. Thank you so much for taking the effort to... Uh, to prepare those refreshments, uh, we do appreciate them. In fact, let me get uh, our Track Singapore pastors to stand up as a way of saying thank you, turn around and bow down to everyone in thanks. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. We have over this last week enjoyed fellowship with your pastors, not just with uh, Pastor Andrew and Pastor Danny, but with the other track Malaysia pastors and uh, a good time of fellowship and, and getting to be able to pray with one another. Uh, you have been blessed with two very uh, gifted pastors. See Pastor Danny on his playing the percussion and Pastor Andrew, I, I guess you all already know this, but you know, uh, he was selected during our pastor's retreat to represent Jesus in one skit. And, and he rep represented Jesus very well. He, he said to all the pastors, just as Jesus did to his disciples, peace be with you. you know? And he was playing this very important role. You already know that. He's a great actor isn't quite the right word, huh? but he's very good at representing. And uh, uh, praise the Lord, uh, you've got a good team here. And it's a privilege for us to join and fellowship with you uh, this morning. 
The passage of Scripture in Jeremiah chapter 15 has been, has been read for us. Uh, I, I will from time to time be putting up some of the verses, but you may want to keep your Bible open as well. Before I share some thoughts or reflections from these words of Jeremiah, uh, which we believe are God's words uh, to us, please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus, your Son. We thank you for the gift of your written word and these words of your prophet, Jeremiah. We pray that your Holy Spirit will take these words of Jeremiah and guide our thoughts, our reflections, that we may hear your life-giving word, your love, bringing new joy and courage into each of our hearts again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah, how could you? How could you have said and written such things? Well, friends, I had just finished running with the horses in heaven when Angel Gabriel greeted me with these stern words. By the way, you uh, runners on earth, you're going to love heaven's hills when you get there. They're more beautiful than you can possibly imagine. Anyway, I had just come back from my morning jog with heaven's horses and, and Angel Gabriel was waiting for me. Jeremiah, how could you? What? What did I do, Gabriel? You called God unfaithful. I did? Come on, Jeremiah, you know. You know what I'm talking about. You wrote it in your book. Here, look at your chapter 15, verse 18. Why, you wrote, why is my pain unending and my wound grievous and incurable? And then your next line, I, I hardly dare to read it. Will you be to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails? Jeremiah, how could you say something like that about God? Well, well uh, Gabriel, righteous Job said a very similar thing. Yes, but Job was speaking to his friends. They were good friends when everything was going well, but when Job was suffering, they were terrible. They were like a stream that ran dry, just when you most needed its water. Well, that's how I felt too, Gabriel. But Jeremiah, Job accused his friends. You were accusing God. You accused God of, of being like a stream that runs dry just when you most need its water. How could you say that about God? Well, I, I guess it was a little rude. Rude? It was blasphemous. Don't you know that God is, is a fountain of living water? Well, Gabriel, of course I know that. Uh, that's what I, I wrote it myself. Chapter 2, verse 13, see? God is a fountain of living water. Yes, so how could you accuse God now of being a spring or fountain that had no water? Because that's how I felt at the time. What do you mean? Well, when God called me to serve him as his prophet, he promised that he would look after me. I told him I was too young, I didn't want to be a prophet. But he told me, do not be afraid, Jeremiah. He told me that he would deliver me. Well, Jeremiah, God did deliver you, didn't he? No, Gabriel, he, he didn't. At least not in the way that I expected him to deliver me. He, he gave me his word, his message to preach, and I faithfully preached it. It was very hard work, Gabriel. I had little time to play and have fun with friends. And the message that God gave me was not a very popular one. It was a warning of his anger, his indignation. Not a popular message to preach at all. But I was faithful. I wasn't worried about being popular. God gave me his words. I ate them, I digested them, and I spoke whatever God told me to speak. And even though it was very hard work, I did enjoy preaching God's word. It was a joy 
and a delight. I had a calling from God and I was happy. Great, Jeremiah. So, so why then did you call God deceptive and unreliable? Because those early joys of ministry quite quickly disappeared. It felt as if God had called me and then when it mattered most, he abandoned me. I didn't mind the hard work. I didn't mind missing out on the Saturday night parties and fun with my friends. I could accept not being popular or famous. But then the people started accusing me of being a bad preacher. They said I was speaking my own message, not God's message. They said I was discouraging the people instead of building them up. They said that I wasn't doing anything good for the people. They told me to stop prophesying, to stop preaching. They said that I should be killed if I didn't stop claiming to speak in God's name. But I protested. I said, God called me. They said, we don't think so. They wanted me to stop preaching. But I wouldn't stop. How, how could I stop? God had put his words in my mouth. It was in my heart, in my bones. I couldn't stop. I just had to speak. And so I kept on preaching, Gabriel. And they punished me. The chief priest, chief officer, they, they beat me like a criminal. They put me in stocks, in chains, in the middle of the public square. And God, what, what did God do? Nothing. God didn't step in to save me. He, he let them do those terrible things to me. How, how humiliating. I, I asked God to stand by me. I begged God to convince them that my calling was true. It was really from God. And I begged God to make them believe. But God didn't do anything. Or at least it seemed as if God didn't do anything. It seemed like water from his fountain just dried up. Just like the friends of Job, God seemed like a fountain of water a spring of water that dried up. It felt like God abandoned me just when I needed him most. But Jeremiah, God didn't abandon you, did he? I mean, people all over the world today, they know you, Jeremiah, as a true prophet. Your book is in the Holy Scriptures. All those people those days, they were wrong about you to call you a false prophet. God did deliver you, Jeremiah. Yes, Gabriel, God did. So, how could you, Jeremiah, how could you have called God deceptive? You, you even dared to use the word that is, that is most characteristic of God, the word unfaithful. I mean, you, you, you use the word unfaithful. God is is faithful. If anything, if nothing else, God is the faithful one and you called him not faithful. How could you? God was, is, always will be the faithful one. I know that, Gabriel. I, I probably even knew that when I, when I wrote those words, accusing God of being unfaithful. How? How could you do that? Gabriel, uh, Jeremiah, how could you do that? And you not only called him unfaithful, you called him deceitful. Why would you record such terrible words, untrue words, in your book? I don't know, Gabriel. I guess maybe God wanted me to write those words. God? Well, that's why those terrible words are in God's book, God's holy scriptures, I guess. I mean, if God didn't want my words or didn't want me to write it, he didn't want my words included as part of his holy word, then he wouldn't have let it become part of his holy word. So 
God must have wanted it there for others to read. But why, Jeremiah? Why would God want that? Why would God want other people to read words that are not true? Tell me, Jeremiah, tell me. Oh, Gabriel, will you please be an angel? Go and ask God directly. I did, Jeremiah, and God told me that I should come and ask you. God did that. That's just like God, isn't it? Okay, Gabriel, here's what I think. I think God must have allowed me to say and write those things, record them for history, because maybe God must have thought that it would be helpful. Helpful? How can it be helpful for people to read that you called God unfaithful, unreliable, like a stream that has run dry? Gabriel, maybe you super holy angels find it difficult to understand. But you know, a human being like me, I, th I can think of at least three ways it might be very helpful to read such words. Three ways. All right, Jeremiah, help this clueless angel understand. Okay, Gabriel. Here's the third way it might be helpful. Third way, but you said, you said there were three ways. You haven't mentioned the first two ways yet. Uh, I know, but you know, it's almost lunchtime and a bit hungry. I, I, let me just tell you the third way today, okay? You humans always have excuses. Okay, tell me how it can be helpful. Look down there, Gabriel. Do you see? Where? What? There. Down there in, in, in tiny Malacca, that, that beautiful church service. Oh, you mean all those nice people there at Wesley, Malacca? Yeah, that's right. All those nice people and, and also all those visiting pastors from Singapore with them. Oh, you mean the ones that are sleeping? Yeah, yeah that's them. Uh, they're tired out from their retreat. Yeah. So, Jeremiah, why do you think God thought it would be helpful for people to read your terrible frustration with God. Because many of them down there are, are called to be priests and prophets and pastors. Yes, and, and so? So I was called to be one too. And what happened to me might happen to them. They need to be prepared. Prepared for what? Prepared for times when they will feel as if God has deceived them. Prepared for times when the fountain of God's joy and love will seem to dry up. For times when they will feel frustrated with ministry rather than fulfilled. For times when they will feel just like Pastor Jerry. Pastor Jerry? You, you mean Pastor Jerry down in Singapore? I, yes. Can you see? See how sad and confused he feels? For five years, he has tried his best to be faithful to God's call. Most of those years, he found the work tough but fulfilling to preach God's word and to pastor God's people. It brought him such joy. But now, can you see, he, he feels like giving up. Some of the elders in his church, they don't think that he should be their pastor anymore. Some of his colleagues question his calling. Jerry hoped that God would change their minds. God must surely confirm the calling to them. But nothing has changed. Still, they do not believe. Still, they say that Pastor Jerry isn't worthy to be called a pastor. Jerry doesn't know what he has done wrong. And as far as he knows, he has tried to be faithful to God. He, he gave up his job to become a pastor. And now Pastor Jerry feels just like 
I did way back then. He feels alone, abandoned, forsaken by God, as if God has not been faithful to him. Gabriel, can you see how sad and confused Jerry is? Yes, Jeremiah, I can see. And Gabriel, it's not just Pastor Jerry. Can you see Sally down there? You see her there? Yes, I do. Sally isn't a pastor. But she's also feeling as if God doesn't hear her prayers anymore. Sally's husband is dying of cancer. And God isn't healing him. And Sally can't understand why. She's been faithful all her life. She's been praying. The church has been praying, but God isn't answering. Sally taught Sunday school, did her best to raise her kids right. Why isn't God answering? She feels abandoned. She feels afraid. She feels alone. You know, Gabriel, Sally would never ever say or write what I said and what I wrote that God feel, it feels as if God has abandoned her or deceived her, but she would never say that. She's, she's too good. But Gabriel, she feels it. She feels as if God has forsaken her. As if God is like a fountain of water, a spring that has now gone dry. Just when she needs God, the most. Can an angel understand that, Gabriel? Yes, Jeremiah. I think I'm beginning to understand. Then please go down, Gabriel. Go down and help Sally. Go down and help Jerry. But what can I tell them, Jeremiah? Tell them that the prophet Jeremiah also felt the way that they feel, forsaken and alone. Tell them that Jeremiah was also rejected by his colleagues and friends and leaders. Tell them, tell them what God told Jeremiah, what God told me. Verse 19. That if they turn back to God, that if they don't give up turning to God, they will find that God never actually left them. That God has been there helping them, helping them turn and remain faithful. Tell them to keep turning to God, to keep bringing their tears and their frustrations to God in prayer. And Gabriel, tell them that God is there right by their side, even though it may feel that God is far away. Tell them that God loves them. Let's take a few moments to pray together. And maybe God's Holy Spirit will bring to your mind and your heart the name of someone who perhaps is feeling a bit like Jeremiah right now. Confused, maybe angry, feeling abandoned by God. That person may be yourself this morning. Whoever that person is, Will you pray for him or her by name now, quietly in your heart? Pray that they may come to know that even though it feels as if God is missing, may they know that God is present and that God loves them. I'm going to share with you a little song Keep praying and, 
and pray these words for your friend that they may know that God is with them. Tell my people I love them Tell my people I care When they feel far away from me Tell my people I'm there Please tell Jerry I love them, him. Please tell Jerry I care. When he feels far away from me, please tell Jerry I'm there. Please tell Sally I love. Please tell Sally I care When she feels far away from me Please tell Sally I'm there Tell my people I love them Tell my people I care when they feel far away from me Tell my people I'm there